Today we're looking at how to determine the delta H for, of a reaction given experimental data. The one thing we, that is new here is we're going to use one milliliter solutions. We're going to uh, determine the moles of the solutions using the molarity. So the question is a student mixes 50 milliliters of water containing one molar HCl at 22.5 degrees Celsius with 50 milliliters of water containing one molar of sol sodium hydroxide at 22.5 degrees Celsius in a, stone, in a foam a cup calorimeter. The temperature of the solution is increased to 26.0 degrees Celsius after the mix. That's the maximum temperature. Is heat released or absorbed? Uh, so what you need to do is write the balanced reaction in terms of change in enthalpy, heat, delta H, for the reaction in terms of kilojoules per mole. This is what the experimental setup looks like. You're familiar with this. It's basically two styrofoam cups that are nestled together because this provides an insulated environment. That way all the energy from the reaction goes into the water and not, not outside of the system. And then it's got a co uh, cork stopper for insulation, a stirring rod, and a thermometer so we record the temperature. This is a data that we're going to get from this. We're going to have uh, the molarity uh, uh, 50 milliliters of the 1 molar HCl, so that's data. 50 milliliters of 1 molar sodium hydroxide, that's data. The initial temperature of both solutions, and then the final temperature at which they both reach. So the sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric solutions will, will assume a density of 1 gram per milliliter, and that way we'll be able to determine the mass of the water. So here, first thing I'm going to do is write the reaction. And what we're trying to do is determine the delta H for this reaction. So when hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide solutions are mixed, it's basically a double displacement reaction. When you, when you see this, the hydrogen and the hydroxide come together, together to form water, and then the sodium and the chlorine together come, come together to form sodium chloride or soluble, soluble salt. So the first thing I want to do is, is determine the moles of each reactant. To do this, we know molarity, you know, this is what is new, molarity is equal to moles over liters. So that means moles is equal to the volume in liters times the molarity, which is moles per liter, because when you multiply these two things together, the liters will cancel out, and you'll just be left with, with uh, the moles of the substance. So let's do this. So first we, we have the volume in milliliters, so we want to change this to liters. So we divide by 1,000, and milliliters cancels out. And then we multiply the, by the molarity of the solution. We know the solution is one molar, so there's one mole in one liter, and when we do this, liters will cancel out. And so 50 divided by 1,000 times 1 gives us 0 0.050 moles of HCl. Now, luckily for this, there's also the same volume and concentration of sodium hydroxide, so the moles of uh, sodium hydroxide is exactly the same. It's 0 0.050 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now, what's nice about this, we see that these are in a 1 to 1 ratio. And that means we actually have the perfect ratio here because we see in the balanced equation there's a 1 mole of hydrochloric acid that reacts with 1 mole of sodium hydroxide. Now, we're obviously not using a mole, but we're using the, the perfect ratio. So how do we proceed with the problem from this point? So we know from this reaction that the energy that is lost when this reaction occurs goes directly in the water. We know this because the temperature increased. Uh, we know when the temperature increased, the reaction is exothermic, so it goes from the breaking of the bonds in the form of the new bonds from the water, from the reaction into the water itself. So the water gains all the energy that's lost by the reaction because it's an insulated system. So what we're going to do is use the formula Q equals MC times delta T for the water. Now we don't know the specific heat of the substance. We don't really need that. All we need is the specific heat of the water. So everything in this reaction, in this equation, is going to, is going to be for water. So we're basically doing the part with water gained. Uh, so we're saying the mass of the water times the specific heat of water times the change in temperature. Now for that mass, we know that we have 50 milliliters of each, which basically means we have 50 grams of each, so we're going to add those together. So the mass of both the hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide will be 100 grams. So, we, so this is where our setup looks like we have 100 grams multiplied by the specific heat of water, which is water is a liquid, then multiplied by the change in temperature. And this is true for both solutions because they both start off at 22.5 and they go up to 26.0 degrees Celsius. When you multiply all these together, we see grams cancels out, degrees Celsius cancels out, and you're left with your final answer in joules. Now, the other thing, now, so the final answer we get for this is 1,464 joules. 
Now for this, we know that this is actually a negative Q because it's an exothermic reaction and that's, that's uh, going to be, means it's exothermic. So what do we do from this point? Well, remember when we talked about the delta H for a reaction that's expressed in terms of kilojoules per mole. We didn't actually have a mole, we had 0.05. There's very rare times when you actually use volumes or masses of a mole that match a balanced equation because they're such large amounts. So what you have to do is make a conversion and change our joules to kilojoules and, our, and then our 0.05 moles to moles. Now here, here's how we do this. So first we put the number of joules that we have from the reaction at the top, then we divide by the number of moles. Now this is per reactant. So we, it's not the total number of moles, it's the moles we have of each. Now since it's, each one is, uh, is a perfect ratio, that's what we're going to use. If it was limiting, we'd use a smaller amount. When we do this, then we want to change the joules to kilojoules, so we divide by 1,000. So you see joules cancels out. And then at the end, you're left with the term kilojoules per, the, per mole. Now the other thing we want to do is we saw that the temperature went up, which means this is exothermic. When you write a delta H, you need to indicate if it's a positive or negative value. Since this temperature went up, it meant it was exothermic, and we have a negative sign for our, our heat of reaction. So the last one I want to talk about, well, how do you express this when you, so our delta H is equal to negative 29 kilojoules per mole. Now this is true, we use 0.05 moles, but now we relate it to the one mole times one mole and one mole and one mole in, in, the, in the balanced reaction. Now how do you express this? There's really two different ways to write this. One of the ways, to, so this reaction was exothermic because heat was released and the temperature increased. So there's really two ways to write this. So this is the first way. You can just write the reaction, comma, or somewhere say the delta H is actually equal to 29, negative 29 kilojoules per mole. So this is the first way. The other way you can write it is actually put the energy in the reaction. Now we know this is exothermic reaction, so the energy is actually a product because it was given off. So I'm just trying to write product right here. So right there, and so we're saying this is a product. So that's a product from the reaction. Now, the, now notice we didn't put a negative sign because it, that was given off. Uh, if it was an endothermic reaction, we'd write the energy right here at the beginning of the reaction. And so, but this was a exothermic, so it's just written at the end. That's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.